In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the hand back stitch. Uh, we say hand back stitch because machine sewing uses a process called back stitching, which is different than this. So the hand back stitch is a hand sewing stitch, and it is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, hand sewing stitch. Um, you'll need two pieces of muslin for this, your snips, and a threaded needle. As usual, start with your muslin lined up on top of each other nicely. Set your snips to the side because you'll need them at the end. Oh, I forgot to tell you, again, if you want to pin, you are more than welcome to. I will. Again, with my cross pinning because this sample is going to travel across in this middle line. Get my pins in place. When you pin, make sure you're holding everything where you want it to be. Your hands hold it in the exact place you want it, and then the pins are what you use to maintain that. So if you pin it incorrectly, you're going to sew it incorrectly. Or if you pin it in the incorrect place. There we are. There's no real correct way to pin. All right, the hand back stitch. It starts from the back side. Come through the fabric. Pull that down. As you can see, as usual, we have our knot on the back of the fabric. All right. Okay, in the hand back stitch, the stitch is going to grow in this direction, but every stitch we take that we see goes in this direction. You'll see. We're coming out of the fabric. We want to go in a little to the left, and we want to come out a little to the right of where that needle is. I'm sorry, reverse those directions. They will appear so to you. So, there you are. Now on this one, you'll take your stitch right next to where you came out last time. There, and you wanna stitch over to there. Again, take your needle back through where you came out and over to a new empty space in the same line. Now what's happening here, every time you take this stitch here, you're backtracking a little, but on the back side, you're coming forward two stitch lengths. Does that make sense? So for every stitch you see on this top side, that is, you know, a nice little stitch. They're twice as long on the back. Can you see that? What it does is it gives the effect of it looks like machine stitching on the top, but on the back you see that it's twice as long. Now you want to keep this stitch tidy and you want to go in right next to that previous stitch that you took. You don't really want to leave gaps. It's not very, uh, it's not as effective if you leave the gaps. Part of the strength of this stitch relies in the compact nature of it. So, just keep sewing along. Oh, I keep getting my thread wrapped around the corner of my project. It's a special pet peeve of mine and I'm really good at it. I hope y'all are able to avoid it. This is the hand back stitch. I'll show you the back side again in just a moment and you can see more of those doubly long stitches. All right. Now you see, oh, let me pull my pen out of the way. See these doubly long stitches here? Looks nice and tidy on the front, except for my little drunk meandering there. All right, so you'll do this the rest of the way across your sample, all the way to the end. And when you get to the end, you want to knot off, take your last stitch from front to back, flip your work over, and as always, only biting through the back piece of fabric, you want to pick up one or two fibers or one or two yarns right next to where that thread is coming out. And as you draw that down, you'll get a tiny loop, and you can put your needle through there, and that makes your knot. One more. We always like a double knot. 
was a nice loop. Well, figure eight, but you can still put your needle through that and draw that down. There's your knot. Once you've sewn all the way across this sample piece, that is your backstitch, hand backstitch.